Y'all working on the mic? Because I want to make sure that I'm talking to make sure that this is perfect for King Alex. So we're getting a little back. So where should he where should he perform from? Get behind the speakers. All right, we're going to get back. We're going to get back. Is that working? I guess you're going to have to do it from here, bro. This is stage. You can do this. Right? Okay. Still a little back. We're getting close. Just a little bit. All right. There we go. Um, so we understand that we have to give and create space for our young people. Because if we don't create space, they're going to take space. Right? And so they, they're going to they're gonna get their space. They're going to they're gonna be heard. They're going to be seen. And so the question is, are we creating safe space for them to do their thing and so that they can express themselves in, in whatever spirit has moved them to express? Okay? We good? We good? You know, this is a chapel now. Most chapels, folk talk back. That's part of the black experience where, you know, when somebody got the mic, you, you know, this is a call and response. So, we, you know, we're not just talking to ourselves. Um, we had a great night last night, and we'll talk a little bit more about that. We have Brother Tory Russell from Ferguson. Uh, brother has been out in the street every single day since Mike Brown was murdered, um, organizing. And when you hear the brother, you'll know. Uh, he's genuine, he's authentic, he's the real deal. Um, we have sister, uh, clergy sister, uh, sister Tapman, who been organizing in Ferguson. She'll be here. Um, you got our Malcolm X grassroots movement uh, comrades coming from um, Alabama, Mississippi, and New York. New York, so they coming strong. So um, y'all, um, you know, as African people, Sometimes we say it don't. How's it go, Brother Samanga? It's, it starts when we all get here. <laughs> so y'all here, and King Alex is going to give us something, and you're going to talk a little bit about it. We got him. We got him uh, what, how do y'all say that in hip-hop, man, when, when everything is set up and ready? Q. You got him queued up? You got, you got my man queued up. So let me bring him out. Let me bring him out. Coming to the stage. A brother that y'all gonna hear a lot about because he's positive. His mother's right here in the audience, and you gotta hear this powerful lyrics from a powerful young brother. Brother is how do you now? God, I feel old. This brother's 21 now. Mercy. Okay, all right. I'm old. You young. Do your thing. King Alex. Let's give it up. Warm him up. Give him some love. Hey, how's it going? I hope you're having a good morning. Had y'all get some good breakfast. Um, basically, um, this song is about father figures that was in my life because I didn't have a father in my household. Um, so this song was dedicated to them. All right, y'all ready back there? To all the father at home, Keep your head up. Even though I didn't have a father there, you all gave me a helping hand. Even though I didn't have a father there, you all helped me to be a great young man. Even though I didn't have a father there, you all gave me a helping hand. Even though I didn't have a father there, you all helped me to be a great young man. Thanks to all the men out there For the ones who taught me and I really cared I was taught how to tie a tie Some educated me in different ways to open my eyes I was taught a firm handshake Many told me good in school And a few showed me how to play pool Even though I didn't have a father there Even though I didn't have a father there You all gave me a helping hand Even though I didn't have a father there You all helped me a great young man even though I didn't have a father there, you all gave me a helping hand. Even though I didn't have a father there, you all helped me to be a great young man. I was shown how to play music, and they said, it's my 
table, so don't abuse it. They even told me no excuses. I also learned how to play chess. I still how to be my best. Even though life's the biggest test, I must confess. I realize that I am blessed. Even though I didn't have there. Yeah. Even though I didn't have a father there. You all gave me a help. Even though I didn't have a father there. You all helped me to be a great young man. Even though I didn't have a father there. You all gave me a helping hand. Even though I didn't have a father there. You all helped me to be a great young man. Music. And many said education is valuable, so don't abuse it. They even told me no excuses. I also learned how to play chess. I still how to be my best. Even though life's the biggest test, I must confess. I realize that I am blessed. Even though I didn't have a father there. Even though I didn't have a father there. You all gave me a helping hand. Even though I didn't have a father there. You all helped me to be a great young man. Even though I didn't have a father there. You all gave me a helping hand. Even though I didn't have a father there. You all helped me to be a great young man. There's an old saying that says, it does take a village to raise a child. That's true. That's why I give a stand of voice to all of you. I'm grateful for the money my dad gave, and I'm very grateful for the love of God that continues to save. Thanks to everyone to help me to see. I won't be a statistic and lose because positivity is what I choose. Even though I didn't have a father there. Even though I didn't have a father there. You all gave me a helping hand. Even though I didn't have a father there. You all helped me to be a great young man. Even though I didn't have a father there. You all gave me a helping hand. Even though I didn't have a father there. Help me to be a great young man. Even though I didn't have a father there, you all gave me a helping hand. Even though I didn't have a father there, you all gave me a helping hand. Even though I didn't have a father there, you all gave me a helping hand. Even though I didn't have a father there, you all need to be a great young man. All right, God bless. Thank you very much for this opportunity. I'm a little bit nervous up on the stage. I may mess up a few times, but I sure hope I got my point across. Now God help me, because I, I know he's working in all our lives. So we just got to submit ourselves. So I was going through something in the morning, and I just wish I would have prayed more about it. But I hope that y'all can learn from my lessons, learn from my problems exactly, and then make it to lessons. So I'm sorry for a little bit of inconvenience here and there, but y'all give it up. We got a new mic. We trying to work it out. We switching mics. Can y'all give it up for this young brother? Uh, some of us know how hard it is to have to try to navigate this very confusing world without a father figure in the house. And so for this young brother to come up and to open himself up, that's, that, that right there says a whole lot about his mother and about this process that he's gone through. Because every, every young brother is not going to share all of that, right? Because the way, the way we sometimes see that play out, is what we saw last night at the football game. I know they were shooting at the football game the other night. I just, one of my basketball players who plays football was out on the field when they just, about 20 shots rang out. So when we, when we don't have these opportunities to let their voices be heard, they're going to be heard. It's either going to be in this loving way that he just really blessed us with, or it's going to be in a, in a negative way. So with that, we just want to give it up to him one more time. King Alex, thank you for sharing, brother. Y'all, we are um, right on time, right on time. We're going to ask all of our um, opening plenary participants to make it to the stage. I see my brother here from the Nation of Islam. Assalamu alaikum. Good to see you, my brother. Yes, sir. Uh, Doc, if we can come on up, we're going we're gonna to start out. In a, in a few minutes, uh, Sister Tayani, if we can grab everybody and we get ready to push forward, we have these workshops. So everybody's registered for a workshop. Everybody knows that this is a working conference. And so 
it's really more about quality than quantity, right? Because I know I'm going to have to just take it here for one second. I know that some thousands of years ago, there were just 12 Africans. We still be talking about them, right? And one, one critical African, but there were 12 Africans around this brother. And so it still, at this moment, resonates uh, as a revolutionary against the Ro Roman Empire. So we just dealing with another empire. So we got Sister L in the house from hashtag is bigger than you. Give it up for her. Brother Tory Russell here. Brother Tory Russell here straight from Ferguson. We got the good Reverend Derek Rice from San Kofi United Church of Christ from the south side of Chicago. Right? He went to Whitney Young High School before they were state championships in basketball. <laughs> Y'all know I got the mic. I'm a John on my brother here. Um, we had a Brothers of Letters Make Man in the house. Where they at? I saw uh, Brother Jared, Brother Doug Evans, bro Dr. Gary White. So this is a, a gathering of organizations and individuals who just say we're going to keep on fighting. We're not going to give up. In fact, we're inspired by the young people to fight even harder. Right? So we're going to do some, uh, we got some special things that are, that are preparing to happen. Sister L is up here, so she got some high heel boots on. Man, it's for real. Right, we got, we ready for combat. I want all my camouflage. I want to make it real clear what we're going to do today. We're going to war. All right? So I want to make sure, does everybody have a program? Everybody receive a program? If you don't have one, we're going get to get you a program to make sure that you where we need to be. And the program has on it, if you were here last night, that was the wrong program. We got a new program. And the new program has everybody on it, um, all of the organizations listed, and we just want to respect everybody's work. So with that, I just want to make sure we got Minister Juan is close. Sankofa, did y'all, did, did, were you greeted with a warm smile when you came in? Were you greeted with a, a, a real good spirit when you came in? Right? That's Sankofa United Church of Christ who is hosting this plenary. They are, all of them folks you see in those pretty t-shirts. And see, I'm surprised it is not purple because most of the time when I see this brother, he got on something with purple on. Oh, there's the purple shirt, see? Zion got the purple shirt on. He's going to always represent his fraternity. That's okay, right? We're going to keep moving. Um, but Sankofa is here welcoming you all. So that good spirit is the spirit you can get every Sunday right here on ITC's campus right around the corner. Like, like literally in this is Building 3. You go to Building 2 on Sunday morning. You can get that same spirit, that same energy, and we're revolutionary. All right? So Sister L, we're gonna just we gonna bring come on, Sister L. I wanna make sure. Let me let me introduce our co-chair, um, Sister L from hashtag is bigger than you. And this is how I'm starting to introduce her now. Y'all remember when it was five thousand folks about ten days after the Michael Brown uh, murder? And that's what it is. I hate when people say the Michael Brown situation. I mean what I mean, I don't even understand. What, what is the situation? I mean, it's a murder. We real with that. So we have to, you know, deal with that language. But this sister, in a few days, organized and on social media and got 5,000 people to roll and roll deep from the CNN Center to the Center for, Center for Civil and Human Rights and then back to the CNN Center in the pouring rain. Talk here. Right? Talk here. This this sister. Y'all look, look y'all look at this one right here. <laughs> right. right here. Right. In the room with y'all right now. This that's who did it. And then just the other day was anybody on 7585? And it got blocked. <laughs> this one right here. Right. So now I know some of y'all like, well y'all, she, you know, we had to pay our um your late fee to pick up your children. You, 
You can bring, that, bring her the tab. She going to tear it up. <laughs> you know, like glory, tear it up. I don't care about that. So we want to introduce this sister. She got a warm spirit. You're going to feel it. You're going to see all of the other young people. And we're going to keep it pushing because we are starting a little later than we expected. But uh, here we are. All right? Everybody cool? Yes, and by the way, I'm Molly Davis. I just want to recognize, where are all of our um, folks? Sister Nana, can you throw your hand up in the air? She's been organizing. Sister Tiani. Ah, right, come on, stand up real quick. See, I've, I've messed up before. Derek Young. Everybody on the organizing committee, stand up real quick. Come on. Sister Norma, y'all stand up. Come on, stand up right quick. I know this may feel like it's out of order, but it's not. I just want to make sure that you see all of these folks. This, is, this young brother here, Corey Silas, is a senior at Decatur High School. This is his senior class project. So when your, mind is, when your mind is right, you can make your academic stuff line up with your politics, right? So his mother is a wonderful lawyer and a federal uh, defender who uh, has mentored me. So it's all connected. With that, Sister L, you going you gonna to bless him with something this morning? Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> How many of y'all was here last night? See? Uh. See? See, these are new folks. You got something? I got something. Right on. Here she is. How's everybody doing this morning? Now, um, Brother Mal Willie likes to big me up, but I can't. I, I mean, it's all about community and family. So, you know, these these movements that we do in the city, these things that we've carried from Atlanta to Ferguson to all over the country couldn't have happened without the organizing of a lot of different organizations. So I have to big up my people. Hashtag it's bigger than you. Uh, Kristen and Robin, y'all want to raise your hands real quick? After Michael Brown was executed in the streets of Ferguson, 20 young people who had never met each other ever before um, gathered and, and uh, planned that march at the scene and center in five days. So we gathered 5,000 people in five days, and I couldn't have done that. I don't even know 5,000 people. So I just um, I want to lift up community, lift up um, collaboration, and you know, making sure that the revolution doesn't happen in silos. Ashe and amen. Um, so. I don't have nothing memorized. You, you know, we're just gonna, um, you know, when uh, somebody's performing and they're trying to figure out what they're doing next, so they start small talking. That's what I'm gonna do. So, uh, how was y'all? Y'all get here all right? <laughs> While she's looking, um, everyone is gonna be here for lunch. We need you to grab a, a lunch ticket. It's six dollars. You can get a turkey or veggie. So we had they're doing you know, veggie sandwiches or turkey sandwich. So it's Subway, and it's right out, right out here. We need you to get the ticket because we're placing an order right now. And so um, we're placing a big order, and whatever's not eaten, we're going to, um, Sankofa is going to pay for the rest of it. <laughs> I'm just playing. But we really do need you to go ahead and buy your lunch tickets. It's important because they have set aside a certain number of, uh, of sandwiches. You ready? Okay. All right, that was a good stall. There it is. All right, y'all, it's early, so we're just gonna, uh, we're gonna do this the, 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 the way I was taught, um, a little bit of call and response, so I'm gonna bring y'all in when y'all ready, all right? So everybody awake? We all alert? All right, cool. I think Anana, Anana likes this poem. <laughs> in the first rotation, she is velvet galaxy dressed onyx. She is the first thing we ever know of masterpiece. Fermented lips bloom in my throat, a woven basket lined with tar, a black sky to arm the stars. There is battle boiling in our blood, ain't it? A wise woman told me, little girl, the war is already won. The war is one black girl braving the wilderness. Ain't it all ashe and amen anyway? The second time, she's an open cavern bathed in God. Rusted suns sit her lap, the mouths set horizon dusk ablaze. I know they say we black bodies don't last, but all the moons bow down on our feet. Ain't it all ashe and amen anyways? 
Us, us women ain't nothing but revolution and resolution. Reincarnations of the crease and God smiler. Black shadow trying to find its weight in a world littered with fools going. I know a mirror holds its weight in prophecy, but a revolutionary woman can shatter the glass with her song. Ain't it all ashe and amen anyways. She got a heaven of harmonies tucked in her skin. She got a hell of a pen to press these pages down. They say oppression ain't nothing but the presence of blessings. And I say, ain't it all ashe and amen anyways. They told me, your body ain't a cross to bear this world on, girl. Bury yourself in the skin of your teeth, girl. Your speech ain't a crucifix, so fix those lips to sing your own praises for once. Ain't it all ashe and amen anyways. I know black women got their own way round the tree trunk. We all unlearning that our wounds are meant to conceal and deny. We all searching for holy and settling for our holes in the meantime. But ain't it all ashe and amen anyways, girl? So I'll climb this mountain and call it my home in the meantime. The wise woman told me the war is won. She say my skin is one trophy and trial and error. My black a revolution and resolution all at once. Ain't it all ashe and amen anyway? My black sands erect and play symphony while I walk. From spine to sinews to cement, there is light in these eyes. There is God in these eyes. In this mind, a wise woman told me, I know a mirror holds its weight in prophecy, but you a revolutionary woman. You can shatter the glass with your song, so sing the praises from eye to iris. Amen. Ain't it all ashe and amen anyways, girl. She got a heaven of harmonies tucked in her skin. Got a hell of a pen to press these pages down. They told me, your body's not a cross to bear this world on. They tell us, your body's not a cross to wear, bury this world on. We know our bodies are not a cross to bear this world on. So bury ourselves in the skin of our teeth. Your speech ain't a crucifix, so fix your lips to sing your own praises for once, black people. Ain't it all, ashe and amen anyways. All right, all right. All right. Give it up, give it up, give it up, give it up. Yeah, I'm getting ready to turn this over. We, again, are so thankful. We welcome you on behalf of all of the organizations and organizers that came together, set aside any idiosyncrasies, any issues, and just said it's in the interest of our people, in the interest of our struggle, in the interest of our young people. We welcome you. We thank you for coming. We know that it's early, but on some clocks it's late. So we gotta, we gotta be on time. And so we're just very thankful. And I wanna turn it over to two people who um, are absolutely dynamic. They love black people. And, yeah, and it's like, I say they love black people and everybody like, y'all should be clapping. Y'all should be clapping. Cause if we real about it, we living in a world that hate us, but they, we, when we love ourselves, they can't stop us. These two people love black people. They are into institution building. They have a powerful institution right here on ITC's campus, Sankofa United Church of Christ. No other than Minister Juan and Reverend Derek Rice. Let's give it up. Oh, I'm sorry, Minister Juan Smith and Reverend Derek Rice. Let me, let me give her her last name. She been checking me like this throughout the organizing process, y'all. In love, all right? That's how I it go, it's all in love. Alafia, Hotep, what's up? How y'all be? Everybody all right? Before we do anything else, I would just ask Hold that on, we I all. Don't, I don't think we had enough energy. I don't think. You're right. Let's, yeah, yeah, let's do it again. What it do? <laughs> Greetings. Good morning. We need, we need a little more. What it do? Yes. Greetings. Hello. Good morning. Yes. Assalamu alaikum. That's what I'm talking about, black people. No. Here's what you all don't know about Minister Wine. She's got all kinds of energy, but this is a sister who is from the streets of Cleveland. And Marvely was being kind when he says she checks you in love. That's just to cut you if you don't do right. Amen. <laughs> but we thank and praise God for her presence. We recognize um, something very important. I think that we overlook uh, all too often. There's a book that's one of my favorites. It's about 
Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. is called Dr. King and the FBI. And in the beginning of a book, it says that Stokely Carmichael and Michael King have met for the second time. And if they meet again, we need to assassinate both of them immediately because we'll have on our hands a real mile mile like what took place in Kenya. And what we don't realize sometimes is that what's taking place in this room right now is what they were afraid of. And so when uh, Attorney Davis suggested that Sankofa would host this plenary, what we thought it not robbery to do was to make sure that this was not a Sankofa show. Is everybody all right with that? And so we have a brother who is here, Representative Minister Sharif Muhammad from Mosque Number 15, who was going to lead us in prayer. And then we have someone, here's something else that we don't do enough, and we're going to start breaking these walls down. How many people know that beyond Christianity and Islam, we got a whole lot of faith traditions that our people practice powerfully, right? And the truth of the matter is, if you read your Bible close enough, Jesus was practicing some of that stuff too, amen? All right, I got a place to preach tomorrow, so if y'all mad at me, be, be mad, but it's true. And so what we also have is a sister who is here representing Ile Hassan, who is one of the, uh, is one of the Ile's here in the Atlanta area that is a, a traditional African religion. I'm going to let her say whatever she chooses to say about that. But in this order, uh, we'll have prayer uh, brought to us from uh, Mosque number 15, and then we'll be led in libations. And no, 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 we're going to have a welcome from uh, Dr. Ed Wimberly who is a bad, bad, bad man. Let's give God praise for Dr. Edward P. Wimberly, who made it possible for Sankofa to worship on this campus. And, and most folk don't recognize that this revolutionary work is really Christian work. And there's a whole lot of institutions that wouldn't let y'all rebel Negroes come into their space to do this kind of work. Yet here we are in a Christian institution where the president is not afraid to do the kind of work that the government doesn't like. And so one more time, let's give God praise for Dr. Edward Wimberly and the fearless leadership that he is exuding here at Sankofa. So what we'll have again is a prayer uh, from uh, Nation of Islam, Mars number 15. Dr. Wimberly will share words of welcome with us, and then we'll have libations from Sister Efun Sade. Amen? Amen. Please stand, brothers and sisters, as we communicate with the divine supreme being. In the name of God, the beneficent, the merciful, all praise belongs to God, the beneficent, the most merciful, master of this day of judgment in which we now live. Thee do we serve, and thee do we beseech for help. O Allah, guide us upon the right path the path of those upon whom thou hast bestowed favors, not the path of those whom wrath is brought down, nor those who go astray. Say he, Allah, God is one. God is he upon whom none is independent, but whom all do depend. He neither begets, nor is he begotten, and there is none like him. Almighty God, please bless this gathering of love and unity among our people. So we see beyond faith tradition, beyond anything that has divided us in the past, that we can work in unity and love together for one common cause and purpose for the benefit of ourselves, our family, and our people. Amen. Good morning, Mesa Down. Good morning. And welcome to the Interdenominational Theological Center. I want to thank uh, Dr. Rice for inviting me here, and I'm so glad that we made the decision uh, a while back to make sure that the San Kofer United Church of Christ uh, was going to meet here. Yes, so, where'd you go? Okay. <laughs> He's over here. Thanks. So, thank you very, very much. I, I'm, I've been blessed already uh, from um, the spoken word and, and from uh, everything that has taken place before that. I was fortunate to, uh, to have a father in the home. He was a pastor uh, and uh, as well as a, a mother in the home as well and grandmother sometimes across generations, three generations and those kinds of things. I don't take that for granted, by the way. But, um, you know, it, the, 
the, the, what the uh, young man had to say uh, first off in his spoken word has everything to do with the fact that it's the, it's the village, it's the community. It's, so it's all about that. Also remember now from the Christian faith, uh, one, of the, one of the heroes of the Christian faith is Paul, uh -huh. Apostle Paul. Now what's so interesting about Apostle Paul, y'all probably have never heard before. If you have, you know, then uh, we welcome you to, to, to join the seminary. Yeah. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> But uh, Paul's major problem was that he was trying to develop himself and, uh, and establish his worth at the expense of other people. At the expense of other people. And when he was on the Damascus Road, you know, God confronted him and said, you know, what are you trying to do? Don't you know that I am the source of your worth and your value? This country is all about in terms of its constitution, participation. And that if everybody in this country participates, some folk are going to be unhappy. Some folk are going to be like Paul and saying, look, you are, you are taking away my worth and my value if you participate. But the, those folk don't know the source of their worth and their value. The source of our worth and value is God. Having a relationship with God bestows on us our worth and our value. Don't let anybody take away. Don't let them take away your vote and your participation. Because the Constitution guarantees it, but God substantiates it. Thank you very much and welcome. All right. Hey, I might give him credit for that when I preach some of that on Sunday. Amen. Good God Almighty. I, Anything from the Lord you can quote. I know that's right. <laughs> As we have, <laughs> we have Sister Ephraim Shade, who was a strong Obatala sister, coming to share with us uh, libations. Good morning. In the West African tra tradition, when we say good morning, it's ikaro, ikaro. ikaro. And in the tonal language of West Africa, it's, a, it's very rhythm-based, song-based, ikaro, edabo, odabo, alafia, which speaks to the spirit of the people. Loving, open, it's not a guttural language, dunkof. It isn't. You ever thought about that? It's, it's almost like a song, because that's how we greet. So, ikaro, and at the end of the day, ikale. So you, go, you wake up with a song, and you go to bed with a song. So think of it that way, ashe. Ashe, may it so be manifest. Just like amen, may it so be. Ashe, may it manifest. In the West African tradition, we believe that what comes from your mouth is your ashe. So when we turn around, I don't like that. Mm. I don't know her. Mm. That's your ashe, your energy. So what you put into the universe, you've said it, your ashe. Before any gathering in West African tradition, there is that of thanksgiving. Our bodies are majority water. We can't survive without water. So we give thanks for water. We give thanks for the road. That's important, our destiny, the road. Those of us who come from the Christian tradition who holds the keys to heaven? St. Peter, right? The gatekeeper. In the West African tradition, which is much older than what we know of Judaism, which most of us take from, it is Eshu, who goes by many names, who opens that path, that direction. The next direction is towards our home, our ancestors, our ile, where we gather, our church, where we lay our head, we give thanks. 
And then we give thanks for our ancestors. Because none of us would be here without them. In our Christian tradition, we call it the great cloud of witness. I wanted to, to give you some familiarity of what I'm doing because I wouldn't want any of you to walk out of here and say, oh, Lord, she came up in here and did some crazy African stuff. When Reverend Rice asked me to come, <laughs> I was a little hesitant, but then I was very excited um, because this is a part of my path and journey. What he didn't say to you is that I have been ordained in the Christian tradition for over 17 years. But I am also an Obatala priest in the Ifa tradition. And it is all through Olodumari, who we call God. Our God has no gender, but is sovereign. So all the movies that you see that tell us that we're pagans and we got multiple gods and all this craziness, that's not who we are. We have one God. We have one God. Ola Damari. So I'm going to ask. I'm going to come down because the libation is not is done amongst the people. So I'm going to ask you to please stand. Oma tutu, ile tutu, tutu laboraye, tutu bogbo, tutu ile. Tutu Arumole and all those in heaven, we give you thanks for the gathering of your children who have come from across the ocean. We ask that you empower them as you empowered our ancestors to do the work of Ola Damari, to not forget the roots from which we come, whether we are Christian or Muslim or indigenous or just trying to find our way. Bring the heavenly forces to guide us as we speak your name, Ashe, Ashe, Ashe Ifa. Y'all need to be giving God praise right now. Amen. We want to make sure that we take, I'm going to ask Minister Juan to do this. Come on, she got the right kind of energy for this. We want to make sure that we acknowledge all of the co-sponsors of this powerful event. Awesome. Um, foremost, if there, and, and not that one is any more superior than the other, but just in the way of the program, if there are any elected officials, uh, past or current, in, in our atmosphere, please stand so that you may be recognized for your service. Okay. Um, and so with that, what I would like to do now is I just want to just shout out because I like that. I want to shout out the individuals who, who made this thing possible, who made it, who made, who planted the seeds that, that God has allowed to increase today. And I just want to tell you this, don't be discouraged by the numbers oh, because whoever is supposed to be in this place is in this place right now. Uh. This day, this time, this season was predestined by God. God is the one who provides the increase for everything that we're supposed to do. So count it not robbery that everyone who is here is supposed to be here. Amen. And I say, amen. So big ups, big ups to everyone who did all the work that was necessary and prepared and sacrificed time. Um, there is a long list on the back of the program that was shouted out yesterday um, during the closing. We'll circle back to that. But what I do want to do is just lift up a couple of names um, that were omitted on yesterday, one being Rise Church, the other being Hello Racism and First African Church, um, because those churches have been very integral in our marketing and security and just supporting individuals who have toiled and struggled to make this day possible. So let's just give big ups to them and everybody else who was on here who sacrificed. Amen. Amen. Okay, I'm gonna call them out. So let's do this. And if you're here, stand up because we need to warm up and get some energy in this joint anyway, okay? So, so all the strong, handsome black brothers of Let Us Make Man, stand up. Um, GSU, African American Studies Department, by the AK, if you're here. Sister Care Alliance, Anana does the most. 
Um, Malcolm X, grassroots movement, holding it keep, down. Keep Thank standing, you keep much. standing, keep standing. FTP movement, saving ourselves. Sankofa United Church of Christ with the shirts on. Thankful Missionary Baptist Church, Slaughter, Davis Bozeman Law Firm. Thank you for everything. We won't even tell. Um, the, the, the half can't be told. Amen. Atlanta chapter of Jack and Jill, Learning Technology and Leadership, Jared, Program Evaluation Station, T.R. Stiegel Education Foundation, Mary Pat, a young sister doing the work, GSU Sankofa Society, Champion Law Group, hashtag it's bigger than you, causing social disturbance all over the country, what it do? Shamre Hatora Temple, GSU Black Law Students Association, Tati, Apani Web Design, M-A-D-E, Mercy Robinson Law Firm, the Ujama Society, One Touch Holding Company, Derek Young doing the most for the uh, conference, Dr. Michael Samanga who put all the programming together, Stand Up, Represent, Project Hype, the Think Twice campaign, Attorneys United for Peace and Justice, Atlanta Word Works, Attorney Robert Bozeman, Community Council of Metro, uh-uh, don't stop clapping, uh-uh, don't stop clapping, Community Council of Metropolitan Atlanta. All of the supporting organizations, you want to read those soon? Uh-uh, keep it going, supporting organizations, Next Level Boys Academy, Georgia NAACP, National Action Atlanta, Network Atlanta, African Community Center for Unity and Self-Determination, WRFG, radio station, WAOK, Gene Ross and Cobra Atlanta Chapter, Pangea Institute for Education, ASCAC Atlanta, Jewel Crawford, Atlanta T Southwest, Big Tigger, Rashad Ritchie, Wanik Shabazz, Gate City Bar Association, Georgia Association of Black Women Attorneys, Georgia Alliance of African American Attorneys, the Cab Lawyers Association, Derek Bozeman, Greg Street, Reggie Ross, and Alma. G. Davis Foundation. Big ups to everybody. Big ups. Big ups. <laughs> Minister Juan was uh, trying to trick me a second ago into going right into what she's going to do now. But I have to, I have to say this. Um, it made me feel interesting to say the least. My father in the ministry is Reverend Dr. Jeremiah A. Wright, Jr. And at a sister by the name of Reverend Barbara Allen's funeral, he stood up in front of 5,000 people and said, as he looked over at her casket, he said, if it weren't for you, there would not be a Trinity United Church of Christ. And he started crying. And as I thought about it, I recognized that Reverend Barber was the engine that drove that ministry. And Juan has got this energy. I'm serious. She'll cut you for real. I meant everything I said. But she is the engine that makes Sankofa United Church of Christ run. And I want to take a moment to ask that we give God praise for the work that this sister. She's mad now because I'm doing it, but I don't care. I don't care. I don't care. But Minister Juan is going to share with us village principles because how many people recognize that we talk about loving black folk, but if we're honest about it, you ain't going to cut me today. If we're honest about it, most of us work in silos, and we don't necessarily know how to bring those silos together without cutting one another or backstabbing or having meetings after the meeting. Well, these village principles that this sisters has put together is going to show us how to do the work that we're coming to learn about today. Amen? Amen. Minister Juan Smith. So I'm just going to jump right into it, okay? So this is what we have to do first. We have to see who's in the house. So we're going to do church, we're going to do check-ins, okay? We're going we're gonna to check in real quick. So this is what I need everybody to do. First, I need you to pay attention. We here, right? We here. I need you to pay attention. So this is what we're going to do real quick. Now, think, how old are you? Don't tell nobody. Shh, don't tell nobody. How old are you, okay? Now pay attention to the room. Pay attention to the room. If you are 21 and under, if you are 21 and under, I need you to stand up and represent for real. If you are 21 and under, make some, make some noise. Make some noise. Represent 30 seconds for 21. Uh-uh. Pump it up. Pump it up. If you're 21 and under, make some noise. Make some noise. Stand up for one second because here's the thing. And we have a lot of praise God. So let's do this. Praise God, whatever you call him, her, or the energy. Because what happens is, is they'll put these faces, most of these are young black males, and they'll put these faces on the news and tell us something contrary to what's happening this Saturday morning. Shout out to the young people. You can have a seat. Thank you very much. Now let's do this. Because you know when they go to school on Monday, they're going to be talking about everything. And 
Some of these may be your children, and if not, then you have children in the same age group. So you know if you're a little older than 21, how they talk about us, right, sometimes? So let's do this. If you're between the ages of 22 and 46, stand up and represent and show these young people what they didn't do. Make some noise and represent real quick. Look around the room, look around the room. Shout out, shout out, represent. Awesome, thank you very much. And so, we're not gonna. And so, and so this is what we're gonna do. So this is what we're gonna do. If you're not in those two categories, right, right, right. If you're an elder or you aspire to be an elder, Ashe, stand up and show everybody how to do it. Represent, make some noise. Woo -hoo! That's what it do. That's what it do. That's what it do. Amen. Amen and Ashe. So, so real quick before I get into this village principles piece, I just want to make one statement. And if you leave here today and you quote this statement, Dr. Wimbley may not have wanted his credit, but I want mine, okay? So how many people know, because it's an original, I think, how many people know that there is a difference, and I'm going to slow down, there is a difference between loving black culture and loving black people? How many people know there is a difference between loving black culture and black people? Because oftentimes we were romanticized about the good portions and the good aspects of, of being Moorish or a melanated people, amen? Oftentimes we will pick and choose those aspects of our ethnicity and our culture and our identity that, that we will claim. And, and then the rest are, are your people. Now, if you hear me after the conference saying something like, Everybody your color ain't your kind. Don't remind me about this piece. I'm just saying. And that may apply too. But there's still a difference between loving black culture and black people. And so all of us today had to go through something, right? So we may not love everything about black people. There may be some stigmas that, for whatever reason, historical, emotional, physical, as a result of whatever traumas, were pushed on us or we have entered into willingly, we suffer from, but we can still love each other despite that. And so there's a lot of energy in this room. We, we, some, somebody lost their car keys this morning. Some people had an argument before they left the house. Somebody got pulled over by the cops this morning. Something didn't go right. We started late, but there's positive energy in this place, okay? So this is what we're gonna do. This is what we're gonna do. We're gonna transfer some of the positive energy. There were three separate groups that just stood up. At Sankofa, we have something called the ritual of friendship. Ashe, now this ain't Sunday morning, so we're not gonna greet, we're not gonna catch up, but we're just gonna transfer some energy. Pick three people, one from each of those groups that stood up, and just transfer energy. If you're not comfortable hugging, don't hug. And if somebody give you the church hug, then don't overstep that boundary if they give you the church hug, okay? So whether it be a handshake or a hug, let's transfer some of this black energy, amen? We got 30 seconds. Transfer some energy. Let's get our hug and our shake on. Fifteen seconds, fifteen seconds, we're gonna be decent and in order. Fifteen seconds. As we make our way back to our seats, we're gonna keep this thing rolling. As we make our way back to our seats. Thank you, beautiful. Mm -hmm. As we make our way back to our seats. So real quick, while we this this whole village principle things. We're kicking off with this whole village principle thing because before we can organize anything, before we break out into community organizing 101, before we talk about building the black family, before we talk about anything, whether it be our home, whether it be our neighborhood, whether it be the institutions we are part of, or whether it be the brother or sister that we pass along the way, we have to understand the power, P-O-W-E-R. We have to understand the power of living, playing, working, and struggling in solidarity. And so I didn't say we have to like it. I didn't say it had to be our option of choice. But once you understand the power of solidarity, which is the whole 
the whole aspect of this village principle piece, then you move and you operate different. That understanding controls your subliminal, your subconscious, and everything that you do, you walk in it naturally. And so this whole village principle piece, we did that because we just wanted to have a Sankofa moment. Sankofa is a Western symbol, really, that means to go fetch. And we translate that as we go back in our heritage, in our past, and we get the things that we need to trudge forward in a successful manner. Amen and Ashe? And so what we're going to do in this village principle piece, I'm going to be here for about another six or seven minutes. What I just want to do is, is I want to take us back to a time where success and victory was the way we operated. Because you do understand that we have a longer history of success where we were rulers, where we were nation builders, where we were kings and queens, where we had the riches. We have a continent that has all of the resources that the world needs to survive. Amen? And so we were given dominance over that. And so we have a long history of being successful. And so we go back and we want to talk about the principles that allowed us to operate in that success that allowed us to have villages and dynasties that surpassed everything that was happening in, in the Western world. And so, I got some notes. Why? Four reasons why. One is cultural identity. The second is uncompromising solidarity. The third is accountability. And then the fourth we'll talk about when we get there. So cultural identity, right? This is cute. I like this. So, so let's do this. Let's be real because Brother Tory was real yesterday. So we talked about it. And I'm like, well, you should probably say cultural identity. I like ethnic identity because when we're talking about Mother Africa, everybody was melanated. But from tribe to tribe, the differences were ethnic. So we don't like that because there are some trends that we may not be comfortable with that are dominant or that show up amongst African-American people. And sometimes we try to assimilate and we discard those things. But when we talk about cultural identity, let's talk about the aesthetic piece. So sometimes we have issues with the aesthetics, with the physical things that make us who we are, that make us beautiful black people. And so I would assume because we're here today, we all have a certain level of consciousness, but they say repetition breeds impression. So I'm just going to say it again anyway. So, so things like our nose or our hips or our shape or brother swag and the way he walks or even our dialect that we pick up depending upon where we live. Sometimes we try to change those things. But when we change those things, what we're doing by very nature is we're disassociating ourselves from our ethnic identity. And for those of you who were here on last night, there was a very powerful sister from Thompson, Georgia. And, and she referred to herself as country. But you know what? Okay, I receive that. You know, that, that may not be our language, but I receive country. And, and you know what she did? She walked in country proudly. She was bold in country. She got her message across even though she was country. And so that country, and I'm using that as an example because to me it's not a bad thing. That's her ethnic identity. Talk here. And when she walked in that ethnic identity, she was able to touch people because she was authentic. And so that's just a quick example. We can't go into all of them. This is not a workshop. But hold true to your ethnic identity because sometimes that's the tie that binds us. Cultural identity. Okay. Ooh, I like this one right. Ooh, Jesus. Okay, okay, okay. Uncompromising solidarity. So let's talk about this, especially in terms of nation or institution building. I don't care if you go to a mosque. I don't care if you go to a synagogue. I don't care if you're a member of a temple or a church or fraternal organization or a sorority. Let me tell you. Oh, geez. Or your family. Let's not leave our family. Uncompromising solidarity is probably, you know, they say it's hard to just work and get along with black people. That's everybody. That's sociology in and of itself group dynamics. But how important is it that we stay committed? And so here's the thing about the village principles. In, in, in village, community comes first. Community comes first. So we operate with the mindset of empowering the community. We work towards the greater good of the community as opposed to our own individual priorities. And so that means sometimes that even though there may be a rift 
in relationships, we don't stop loving each other. That means that even though our cousin or our niece or our daughter has done something that we don't approve of, we don't slut shame, we don't disrespect, we do not excommunicate. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lean on that one. And so there is this sense of uncompromising solidarity that the movement must live despite come what may. And so there will be infiltrators. And they will be infiltrators from the exterior and the interior. Some will be natural, because that's just the way Earth moves. So some will be natural. And some will be intentional. Some will be forces that, that come because they're intentional about trying to sabotage our communities. But here's the thing, in, 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 in African villages, you were reared, you were raised to know that as long as the village survives, everybody else survives. So here's the thing, I don't have to have food because if my neighbor has food, I have food. And so when you maintain the integrity of the community, as long as the community is in place, uh, then there is no lack. Uh, there is no lack. So uncompromising solidarity. That means we fight together. That means we live together. That means we play together. That means we struggle together. And we don't compromise. But with that, there's a level of accountability. Because let me tell you what I'm not saying. I'm not saying that Bobo Nim or Keisha or Dr. Such and Such or Sister Such and Such or anybody just runs amok through the institution or the organization or the family. What I'm saying is that we don't let anyone destroy. So there is a level of accountability from person to person. And so what happens is we, we pull coattails. We check one another in love, if that's what you want to call it. We hold each other accountable. So brothers walk together with brothers. That's not the way we treat sisters. Sisters, that's not the way we talk to brothers. This is not the way we operate. But, but along with that accountability is accountability from the elders. So before you even went left or before you even went right, we've been rearing you. We've been teaching you. We've been holding your hand along the way. So this uncompromising solidarity is not without accountability. And so in a lot of communities, there are processes for pulling back in individuals who have gone too far or who have stepped out of check. And again, that goes back to maintaining the integrity of the community. And then finally, there's this piece about the why or the how. And so there's three areas that you can do this. You can do this in your neighborhood. So neighborhood, that's the geographical location in which you live, the geographical area. Now, some people, depending on where you live, your, your area may be more diverse. But if, you're, if, you're, if your neighborhood is populated heavily with melanated, beautiful black people, amen. Mm -hmm. Then there's some things we can do to be neighborly. Like if you bake, take somebody a cake. Now I know if somebody bring you a cake, you're gonna look crazy and throw it in the trash. But guess what? It's a peace sign. It gives way to conversation. And I know we're funny acting, we don't eat from people and we don't do this, but it's not, it's, it's, the symbolo it's the symbology of it. It's symbolic of extending a hand and being in relationship. It opens conversations. It lets down guards. If individuals' children are outside playing, then we make relationships with the children. We monitor the children. We talk to the parents about their children. If it's raining, we go outside and play in the rain. That shows something to our neighbors. We stop and we greet each other and not the motorcycle wave. You do not do the motorcycle wave or the Jeep wave to your neighbors. Despite what society has told you, that is not neighborly. The motorcycle wave is not neighborly. Organize a potluck in your neighborhood. You don't have to eat the potato salad if you're scared. If the macaroni and cheese is too watery, just stay away from it. But show up and hug somebody. So be neighborly. Give me about a minute. And then the second one is, Being community everywhere you go. We're gonna be community everywhere you go. So really quickly, what that looks like is, I am my brother and sister's keeper. Say that with me. I am my brother and sister's keeper. So that means, and I'm gonna be real, because this is how I am, right? I'm, I'm funny, I'm real funny acting. That means if you go to the Walmart over here in the West End, I don't care who walks in there, 
you are your brother and sister's keeper. Amen. Amen. So even if you can't intervene, if you see a situation at the Walmart, even if you can't say anything, you take your cell phone out and you do the best you can and you step back so you don't get any, so you're not a victim and you record from a safe distance or you call 911 on the phone. Or if it's something that you feel like you, you have the capacity to facilitate or to handle or to moderate, then you do the thing. You be the whoever it is in your community or the whatever model or ancestor you had that did the right thing when it needed to be done without being told. You be that person. And so if you see somebody who needs help and you can assist, if you don't know their name, if they don't look like you, if they don't come from your side of the, it doesn't matter. If you're in Europe, if you're in Africa, if you're in Tennessee, if you're in Ohio, if you're in Canada, if you're in Detroit, it doesn't matter where you are. Wherever you see a person of color, he is, she is your sibling. And then finally, this whole institution building piece. And this, I'm just going to do this real quick. So, for example, some of us don't want to send our kids to historically black colleges and universities. Now, I'm just saying, then we want to talk about the city and how bad they were for what they did to Morris Brown. Well, you done paid college all over the country. You done paid tuition, and you haven't invested in any of our, situa any, any of our institutions, and then you're mad at the city for exploiting our history and for taking advantage and for raping our foundations of knowledge when you took food out of your own people's mouth and fed it to somebody else. And that may not apply to anybody here, but that's an example of how we support our institutions. And diversity is cool, I guess, for people who are into that. You know, I'm more of the Malcolm type as opposed to the Martin type. So if on Saturday or Sunday or Wednesday you feel that you need to congregate with people who may not look like you because you can do some things with them that you can't do with us and you really love black people and not just black culture, at least throw some dollars their way or at least volunteer every once in a while or do something. I mean, because there's other things. There's ways you can support. So support our institutions because without our support, then they will be no longer. And so that's it. I don't have anything else. What I would ask you to do is to really just do a little self-analysis. Are we romanticizing this whole thing? Do we love black people or do we love black culture? And so real quick, I'm not going to belabor the point. I'm going to do this real quick. So for, I'm going to introduce Brother Tori Russell. So whoever, if you were not here last night, I'm promising you, you miss it, right? So I haven't read his bio. I know the things that he's done since the Michael Brown execution in Ferguson um, with the protests, with the, I mean, this dude, somebody said it last night. I was so mad. This dude is a no limit soldier for real. Like, I'm about it, about it. I'm about it, about it. Like, this dude is a no limit soldier for real. Let me just tell you, the only thing that I can say about him is that he's raw and authentic. You know, some of y'all that shop at Whole Foods, I can't shop at Whole Foods. I can't afford it. But I would prefer, because it's organic, and you get something from an organic product that you don't get from something that's been processed. And this is an organic organizer. This is an organic activist. And that's all I'm going to say. Brother Tory Russell, come in your own way. Hey, how y'all doing? Good, man. Y'all still ain't woke. I'm finna wake y'all up. Y'all don't even know. Um, i like to thank you, because you made me feel like I've been to Africa already. Now I'm finna go get me a plane ticket to go home a little bit. Um, well, if um, y'all don't know, my name's Tory. I'm from Ferguson. And I say Ferguson, but it's St. Louis. Um, it's no different. You know, I went through the West End. I didn't see no difference when I went all through there down Martin Luther King. It looked the same like at the crib. So, uh... And it took the same distance to get to the hotel to get her. And then they might say it wasn't Atlanta. Um, I'm just going to give you this Ferguson update. I try to do that. Uh, I get emails. I get texts. Uh, it's sad. Um, I went out there August 9th. Um, like I said, I seen a dead body, which was uh, Michael Brown Jr. On my, on my Twitter timeline. I didn't move. I'm sitting at home. 
I scrolled right by it. That's just the norm. Hour went by, more pictures, I scrolled by. I watched TV like it wasn't nothing. I say about two o'clock, I finally seen the picture. Um, Ferguson PD killed my unarmed son. It was the stepfather at the time, I didn't know that. Um, whoever had the insight and the knowledge to put that on the cardboard and upload that on Twitter and Instagram, um, they need a Nobel Peace Prize or something, man, because they were seeing something, and, and they knew that it, it got out the attention. For, for me, for black folk, that was like an SOS. Um, by the time I arrived, about uh, four or so, Brother Shaheed, my elder, because I don't, I don't see no um, – generational gaps. I don't see none of that. I, I see a, 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 a gap of ignorance and a, gap, and, a, and a gap in wisdom. That's all I see. So if you're wise and you want to speak to the youth respectfully, um, we have, I sat on the panel with Council, Councilwoman Irby and some other people and, and Betty Thompson and, and uh, Comp Controller. If y'all don't know, Darlene Green was the one who called Governor Nixon and asked can y'all please send the National Guard down here? That's a black woman. Went to the second oldest black high school in St. Louis. Um, they make a comment to say, you know, maybe if you pull your pants up and vote, come on, man, um, that'll help us out. And I got right up and said, you know, um, where I wear my pants, it don't reflect my intellect. Um, You know, I, I don't do too much preaching. I don't go to the church no more. They ran me off because, you know, I wear my pants a little too low. I get, I, don't, I like the hat on. Some of the homeboys got the little hair going, you know what I'm saying? They want us to, I ain't doing none of that. You love me for me. Um, I, I put people over money. Um, when they looted and rioted and that happened, they don't tell you that they did it for a full shift. They did it from 10 to 6. They beat Ferguson Police Department that night. See, the hood guys that you was afraid of, they saw a weakness in the system, right? The system, the same system that won't educate you, that won't fully employ you, that put you out the house so, so, so your woman can get that little piece of check to break your family up, right? They saw that. They said, it's my time to get a little retribution. And I make a point to say, President Obama, they ain't say nothing until the windows got broken. He wasn't going to say nothing. He wasn't going to Sandy Hook for us. You know, he didn't, he didn't, he didn't Sandy Hook me for that one. You know, and I, and I voted. Not only Teff, he, he, the week before he was registering voters in Ferguson, we the only people that, that what they tell us, we got a problem, we got to run for office. Not vote, and then you vote, and maybe. I ain't going for that one. So November 4th might be the last time I ever vote in my life. I got some new rules. And it start with getting these politicians who call themselves them. I'm a black person. I'm fighting to be shown that I'm a human. I ain't no Democrat. I don't vote for that. I, I just, I'm just telling y'all, man. I'm just trying to keep it real. Maybe I'll wake up, maybe I'll not, man. You know, I'm. I'm, I'm trying to get my inner Stokely on. Um, <laughs> Help yourself, man. <laughs> and, you know, uh, I read, I got ready for the revolution, and, and I love that Sankofa concept, right? And I'm reading Destruction of the Black Civilization. Uh, Chancellor Williams. Chancellor Williams. You, so we reach back into time, yeah. Yeah. but it seemed like we only get the good, and we want to bring that back as if... Something bad didn't happen to get us to this point. So something happened. Somebody dropped the ball. Somebody stopped praying to the right person, right? Somebody stopped hugging the right person. Somebody put, again, money over people and not people over money because people was coming through, cleaning up the window glass, right? It was like, yeah, we got to help our community in Ferguson. And I went down in Canfield and say, what y'all need? Y'all need some canned goods? Because y'all don't know, 6 o'clock is sundown city in Ferguson. 
Ain't no canned goods, ain't no food, ain't no diapers for the babies. You can't come out, you ain't got your meal, ain't no milk. And we talking about glass. They talking about property damage and not the damage to the people. You know, so I'm getting to the Stokely, man. We got a, the system divided us. And I know somebody here, her, they the police. They work for the Department of Justice. They work for the FBI. Yeah. How you doing? Talk to you, man. Talk to you, man. Always one. But my job, my job ain't to worry if you in here. My job is to convert you right now in real time. So I'm going to tell you right now why you in here. I ain't no individual. I'm a part of a group. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you, what, what'd you say? Yeah. You know, huh? Come on now, 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 let's talk about that. Now, if I'm a person, part of a group, then you, even if you ain't, just because you black, we black together. Oh. I love you when you don't love yourself. Yeah. I'm here for that. Yes, sir. If we were individuals, and I'm going to give you uh, uh, on the sociology standpoint, if I drop a, a dog, into a forest by itself, a puppy, fresh out. You might get some milk. You might learn, but it's going to learn to bark. It's going to walk on all fours, and it's going to get up. The cat, the same way. Drop the cat. It's going to find some milk. It's going to walk on all fours, and it's going to meow. That baby, that human baby, ain't going to make it. Now, I'm going to take it one step further. I'm going to put a dog in that same forest, in that same jungle, and let the monkeys take it. The dog gone, get some milk, walk on all fours, and bark like a dog. That cat, uh, what that cat gonna do? Good, get that milk, good, man. walk on all fours, and meow like a cat. What that baby gonna do? Uh, it's gonna what? Uh, it's gonna get some milk, uh, it's going to walk like a monkey, talk like a monkey, and, try, and then on top of that, it's going to try to advance monkey life. Why do I say that? Because you blaming the person, because we emulating the system that made us do this. And then the people who rebel against that, when they say, oh, well, you know, it ain't no fathers, it ain't no fathers in the house. Hitler had a mommy and a daddy. Some of the greatest people to ever walk only had a mama. Because of that group system. If that village took care of you, you made it out. You made it out a little bit okay. You know, Stokely make a good point. He said, you know, we were so, we were so intertwined in the 60s and the 70s, they had to break everybody up. Yeah. They broke the Jackson 5 up, man, gave everybody a CD. Yeah. They said it got to matter for the white folk, break the Beatles up too. <laughs> you know, so my job is, uh, as, a, as a person who believes they're conscious, and I'm going to leave y'all with this. The dashiki ain't gonna block that tear gas. I tried it. Them little credit hours I got from my HBCU that I haven't been on a panel for. Uh. Now I love my I love her at Stowe State University. We can't get no panel. They want to talk about journalism. They ain't even got no journalism school. I love my HBCUs. We support our institutions. The institutions got to support us. So my job as a conscious person is these two things. And you can take the same thing home. My job as a conscious person is to wake up the minds of the unconscious. What do I mean? I got to bring you to that dashiki, that West African, that Sankofa, that Kemet mindset first. Right? I got to get, I can't. You know, I can't feed a baby steak. I got to get you, start you off with the baby food. I got to start you off with what I know you can digest. And on the second end, this is for the conscious people. I'm just going to look at the ground like the priest. I'm going to look at the ground so don't nobody think I'm talking to them. <laughs> the conscious people, my job as a conscious person is to make your consciousness active. 
Because you can romanticize and conceptualize and your African American studies degree didn't help me when that pepper spray and that drone dropped that chemical agent over my head. I'm a tech, they went in the house with your conscious self. You went in and you left them sagging pants, unconscious people to fight the revolution for you. I'm just going to let you know. So my job, I, I cook. You leave me in front of the stove, I might make a feast. My job is to get your unconscious self over to this conscious side and move the conscious people. Because we've been stuck with the book. I can read Stokely. Can I go out and organize like Stokely? I don't make no difference. It don't. I do the same. I like Martin before they, why they killed him. I like that Martin. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And I like the old Malcolm. Yeah. Un unapologetic. Yeah. Yeah. Tell you right to your face. I don't care nothing about you. You got to go over there with it. Yeah. That's the people I like. But you got to love both of them. Because we all the same. We not an uh, individual. We're part of this group. Yeah. It's going to take some group work to get up out of this. My name Tory. I'm Strong, from I'm man. from Ferguson, yeah. but I'm from St. Louis. I love y'all. Yeah. 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 Now in the in the poetry world, we do this right here. Y'all ready? Amen. Amen. They missed it. They missed it. So moving right along with the program nothing left to be said um we have the esteemed pleasure of uh receiving firsthand yeah. uh, a report that can be accessed um many different ways maybe uh you may have gotten hold, a hold of it through a secondhand source or a lot of its facts have been alluded to in various reports papers and things of that nature but we have today none other than the lead organizer for the every 28 hour storm report. Every 28 hour storm report. We have Brother Kali Akuna. Brother Kali Akuna comes to us from none other than the Malcolm X grassroots movement. Bless the Lord, amen. Big ups to anybody who has um, ever attended Malcolm X Festival every year, amen, in the West End, holding it down. But this brother comes with a, a very significant report. He comes with very significant information. He's just providing us with a, a snippet. But oftentimes you can read something, and, and I'll just make this quick analogy. We maybe heard about the baby boo-boo situation on the news last night. Maybe through some type of report, we've heard the statistics of what happens to our people. But when you have somebody who has the connection, when you have somebody who doesn't just relay statistics and facts and numbers, but they have a connection, they have a heartbeat for the information that they talk about, then the presentation is totally different. So I'll let Brother Kylie come in his own way to give us the information that, that shouldn't just be read, that should be felt the energy from person to person, from heart to heart, and breast to breast. Brother, we receive you. <clears throat> Y'all gotta excuse my voice, uh, little horse from doing some work over the weekend, in the past week. But I wanna make this participatory, and, it, and you'll, get, you'll understand why just, just briefly. If I told you that your children were being hunted what would you do? Arm up, fight. Your children are being hunted. So what are you doing? That report, <clears throat> the Operation Ghetto Storm and the report that we did uh, prior to it, the point was to demonstrate, particularly after uh, Obama was elected. Quite frankly, it was to illustrate that even though you have this person of African descent who's been elected to be the chief imperial uh, officer and to drop bombs and kill people, that's what he was elected to do. Be clear about that. 
that even though that that person was elected, if anything, that was going to do nothing more than increase the hunt of your children. And so for folks to not be uh, uh, confused or distracted, that's what that report really was about. And what we really tried to bring home is that if you really look at it in terms of solid numbers, most uh, academics would tell you that there was about a century of, of classical lynching, right? Basically from, from uh, 1865 to about 1965. During that period, there were only two years, and then 100 years, there were only two years, at least that was recorded, let me put it that way. At least that was recorded that there were more than 300 African people that were lynched. Since 1999, there's been over 300 people of our children killed by the police every single year. Every year. Had y'all heard about that? I mean, really, you know, you, you, people say oh, that's just a daily occurrence, right? But most folks didn't know about that. And you can tell because we haven't acted. We haven't organized ourselves on a sufficient level to deal with it. So that's why I asked the question, if I told you your children were being hunted, what would you do? So we have the responsibility, knowing that our children are being hunted, to get ourselves organized and to stop making excuses. Now, if anything, I think Ferguson has demonstrated that. Because one of the key things about Ferguson and St. Louis, uh, and I just consider it St. Louis, having been there, spent some time there over the years. But one of the things that y'all remember in the 80s, when we was running from ourselves, folks was moving out to the suburbs to get away from the inner city so our children can have a better life and a better future. Well, Ferguson is a suburb. Right? And where are we now after all that running? They're still hunting you down, right? You're still out there isolated. Everything that you thought you was running away to, to for better conditions, better markets, more entertainment, all that's done shut down, move a little further out, or move back in in the space that you done vacated, right? So the critical thing is for us to understand that in this new era that we're in, and I would argue that we are in a new era, uh, some of the, we're doing some more research now that we're going to present to you. They're really looking at kind of the last 20 years to really kind of highlight and bring this point. And one thing that we saw that correlates is that the, when I cited that year to you, 1999, that was the first year, basically since 1973, that the prison budget started to go down. So there's a correlation between all those in the 80s and 90s snatching as many of us up as they could, put us in, in these concentration camps. As Soon as their funding start to go down, they have to you know, engage in a new program. If I'm not gonna house you and warehouse you and imprison you, I'm just gonna kill you. And folks are being, the, the folks on the force are being trained that. And it's not by accident that, you know, I'm not a supporter of the police by any, any measure, but let's not forget what happened to that brother, uh, was in Dorner? out in LA, the folks actually read what he, what he alleged and what he was, what, about what he was being told and instructed and forced to do and how he was fighting back, he gave a clear message that I was given clear orders to hunt and kill you. Not to, to, to arrest was a secondary thing that I'm supposed to be doing in my neighborhood. So we got to look at that. So in, in Ferguson, right now and up in St. Louis, been talking to some of the folks from Organization for Black Struggle a little bit behind the scenes, uh, and been trying to just stress, well, when, that, when, uh, when they let this guy off, are y'all really gonna be prepared for what happens afterwards? Right? And then, it's on the ground, but what are we doing? We the reinforcements. So what are we doing? I mean, these are questions I think we got to seriously ask and not, not play with, because you can see from what's going on, if you've really been studying, they ain't playing up in St. Louis. 
They're already organizing the National Guard to be there. Now, I live in Jackson now, which is a little bit further down the river. Uh, but since they made that announcement about three or four weeks ago, there's only a small military base that's, that's around Jackson. They done stepped up the, the, all the, the training, everything. So they're getting ready. And then they already announcing to you that they're they getting ready. Are we getting ready? Have we organized a travel fund? Have we organized defense funds? Have we put up, the, you know, created legal teams to get folks out? These are things that we got to do, and we really can't make no excuses because we know probably, my guess is, what this uh, DA is waiting for is in the, after the elections, once the Republicans take the Senate, they already got the House, uh, Obama's going to be basically a lame duck president for two years. Eric Holder's already said he's leaving, right? So once he's gone, once they're out the equation, then they know, hey, it's, we can do whatever we want. We got a lame duck president, got a, uh, a Department of Justice that ain't going to do much of anything. So we're going to announce that we're going to let this boy walk scot-free, and then we're going to bring the hammer down on any kind of notion that, that you can think of that's going on in Ferguson. I'm telling you that that's the strategy. What's our strategy? So we need to come up with one. I can't, you know, we, one person cannot develop a strategy, right? It takes all of us to really seriously sit down like we're doing this weekend to develop that. But we got to take it as serious as they are presenting it to us. That's the key thing. So I'm always, you know, one of the people, I like to leave you with a sober message about getting organized. Right, because after that first initial wave of energy and then our enthusiasm wears off and you wake up the next day and you're looking at your serious reality, you still got to do that work. And you got to dig deep within yourself to figure out, well, how I'm going to do it. But you can't do it alone, so you got to organize with somebody. Yeah. Yeah. That's the critical piece for encourage us to get organized. organized. So all them organizations that was listed, we all need to come up with, with some <laughs> points of how we're going to react, even if we can't get to St. Louis, and most of us not going to go there, don't have the means, don't have the time, let's just be real, yeah. but we're here in Atlanta, and it's not like Atlanta's been, been absent of, of police killings, yeah. You're right, about it. right, so we need to get prepared for what they're going to do, because you best believe it's going to be enough of our young folks that's angry when that verdict come out, because we saw it last year after what happened with the, the Zimmerman yeah. uh, verdict, when they put Trayvon on trial. Right? Not Zimmerman. They put Trayvon on trial. And our folks erupted all over the country for about a week. Y'all remember that? That's going to happen again. But are we going to be better prepared for it this year than we were last year? That's the question. So I'm going to leave you with that. Get organized. Amen. Thank you. Very quickly, I think we, we're down to the last couple pieces of this opening plenary. There are a couple of... Uh, uh, housekeeping pieces I need to do. First of all, I want to make sure that we uh, acknowledge uh, Council Member Keisha Lance Bottoms, who thought it not robbery to come here and share her time with us. And then second, and very quickly, and I'm going to encourage uh, other folk to do the same thing. Minister Wine very quickly mentioned something that pricked me in, in just in the depths of my soul when she talked about this idea of uncompromising solidarity. Everybody in here, at least once or twice, has gotten to a point where you've allowed someone who is in the movement just like you are to rub you the wrong way and you start acting funny towards them. Am I right about that? So I want to publicly say to Baba Kwame Kalamara, I love you and the work that you do, black man. Let's give God praise for the work that this elder in our community has been putting down for for decades. Now, my responsibility is to very quickly uh, introduce the next speaker who is going to share with us. And I'm listening to this raw, organic organizer from St. Louis. And essentially what he was doing on, in por portions of what he talked about was kind of critiquing some of our weak milk toast politics. Did y'all hear that? Yeah. Some weak milk toast politics that many of us had. And while I had a real cute presentation as I introduce uh, Jessica Caremore, I thought about a sister by the name of Ruth in the Bible who had questionable politics, 
questionable because she had her own God, her own people, and her own home. But for Christians, you all know she's the one that said, your God will be my God, your people will be my people, and wherever you go, I'll go. Questionable politics. But at the end of her story, it says, because she was so intent on persevering, she became the great-grandfather of King David. Y'all don't see why that's a big deal. Go over to the New Testament for y'all Bible readers. King David is where Jesus came from. Y'all still don't see why that's a big deal. Here's why. Because y'all like that white Jesus most folks talk, talk about. Jesus was a rebel against the Roman Empire. He said his ministry was set up to fight for oppressed people. He said his ministry was to bring recovery of sight to the blind. And because a person who did have questionable politics still persevered to win, we ended up with a rebel. This sister that's about to speak has a very similar lineage. Phyllis Wheatley, questionable politics. But she was the first black published poet in this country. Am I right about it? Questionable politics. But one could argue if it ain't for her, our ancestor Maya might not tell us why the cage bird sings. If it ain't for her, Gwendolyn Brooks might not intentionally tell you you are Africa. If it ain't for her, we might not get Sonia Sanchez, who was a revolutionary poet. And we all know if it ain't for her, we don't get this sister that's about to share right now. So let's give God praise, show enough praise, for Jessica Care Moore, who's going to come share in her revolutionary way. Beautiful. Good morning. I'm not the best morning person, but I'm awake now. I, I have my little hot chocolate, and I'm like, okay, I didn't need no sugar. I should have just came straight here. Um, I'm really just honored to be here um, on this really distinguished, amazing panel. And, um, yeah, I'm just like, you can't talk to me. Why are you falling in love with you? I can't take it. I'm just like, I'm looking for you like the whole time. Like, where is he on Twitter? So I can say, I'm trying to talk to you, and I can't. So you got to give me your feeds and stuff. Um, but it's just, it's just uh, refreshing to hear your approach, you know, to this because I've, you know, I've been around, you know, so I just did, I've came into this in a real interesting way. I think I got my first, I got my first death threat in 19, what was it, 1995, and I was um, younger, <laughs> and, um, and right, that was right when I was actually in New York City when I got the death threat on my phone. And this is from reading poetry, y'all, you know, yeah, this is from just reading poetry, and I was, I guess I was shaking up some people in Detroit. And, he's, you know, and what was interesting about it that it was definitely a black man on the phone, you know. So I always say hello to my enemies, too, because they come in many shapes and forms. And, and I, sometimes I meet a brother, I'd be like, are you here to distract me from the, from the struggle? You know, you, I'd be thinking, you look awfully pretty. You must be here from the government <laughs> trying to get me to not do the right thing right now. So, um, so my perspective is definitely a woman's perspective. And the older I've gotten, you know, I've... I was rooted, you know, raised in nationalism, but not f because my daddy and mama were like in the house toting Garvey and had red, black, and green flags. It's because I came from Detroit, <laughs> and there's no choice. You have to. We came from a black city with a black mayor. I'm a Kome a young baby. I, we have our first white mayor. Like I'm, we're trauma. I'm traumatized by Mayor Duggan being our mayor. Like we don't even know. What, you know, he's not, he's a pretty nice guy, but you know, and he loves me. And I can't stand it. He like me, give me hugs. I'm like, oh, you know, I'm trying to like him, but um. It's difficult when you come from a black city that when you all you know is like black mayor, black institution building. So it's funny because when I moved to New York City and none of the poets in New York City had any institutions and they were just running around doing poetry on open mics. And I was like, well, don't y'all want to uh, maybe capitalize on some of this? And like, do you know who Haki Madabuti is? And maybe we should like make a publishing house instead of just waiting for white people to publish us. And some of them are my friends and they're still waiting for white people to publish them. So we're more black press with 13 books in, and we have an amazing, amazing group of poets on my press. But let me tell you that nobody has ever given me a dime. Let me just be clear. Oprah didn't call and say, oh, Jessica, more black press. That's a great idea. We should bring you on the show so we can support more black press. We should put you on the Oprah bestseller poetry. I don't know if a poet's made it on the list. But if they do, it will be from Simon & Schuster. It'll be from Random House. It'll be from... You know, it'd be from one of those, it'd be from Little Brown. It won't be from a more black press. And Third World Press is right there in Chicago. And it's not an attack on Oprah. Like, she cool. She did some stuff in Africa that I like, um, in South Africa. But 
But I'm saying, like, you know, don't get it twisted because a lot of times we sit here and we talk about institution building and how great that is, but we don't give a dollar. Like, last night I was struggling to sell six books. I'm just keeping it real. You know what I mean? I brought six. Six. That's, I brought, like, six books last night. Everybody, I love you, Jessica. High five. What? More black press. That you better buy some of these books. You know what I mean? Because I can't publish anybody else if y'all don't support my work. And when I always tell, sometimes I show up and I don't have my books. I got Raz Baraka's books. I got Danny Simmons books. I got Saul Williams' first book. I got Asha Mandeli's book. Okay, well, they not here, so what? If I publish them, that means they write good. So you have to buy their books too. So we have to like get out of the idea of um, celebrity, you know? And I always tell people, and it's no offense to I know young people, they say, oh, Jessica, um, uh, most deaf knows you. I'd be like, um, you know, no, they'll say, you know most deaf? And I was like, well, no, he, no, he knows me, you know? <laughs> Just so we're clear, I didn't call Nas and ask him to be on his album. Nas knew who I was, and Nas called me and said, I want you to open Nostradamus. I want you to close it. I want you to be the first and last thing that they hear. So I hope, brother, you know, I always talk, I bring up Nas because... He ain't my friend that I talk to every day, but he did that one thing for me um, that a lot of the backpackers don't. And so he was a real dude from Queensbridge. And so when he heard my Detroit on the mic, he understood I was coming from a very authentic place. And so he could have got any little poet in New York to be on his album. And so this is what I mean. We have to get past the, I always tell young people, don't get, the people who are on TV don't, are not more important than you. And, and they're just regular people. And this is why I love my brother Talib, you know, who I, he emailed me last night and said, Jessica, what's that um, organization that you work with in St. Louis that when you go into the jails and they pay you to talk to the kids and do a, a book with them and a CD and a big performance in the juvenile detention center? What's that organization? I want to do a free concert in St. Louis in January. Uh, not a free concert, a concert in St. Louis in January and donate all the money to the organization. Go buy his records. Do you hear what I'm saying? Stop by. I don't care, Jeezy, Sleazy. I don't care about none of them. Two chains, whatever. I don't even know who they are. All them people, and I don't. I don't mind them if they doing something because I've heard some good things that Two Chains was actually doing. So I was like, I might not even like your music, but I'll roll with you if you're in the right place when you're supposed to be there. So we have to get past the idea of what, and then we'll talk about it more. I know this afternoon about the idea of artists as activists. Because I think it's ridiculous that we don't have artists on the front line. Because, I mean, I, I watched Harry Belafonte and all these other amazing, they, I mean, they were actors and singers. They didn't have to be talking about nothing black. Ruby D, who we lost, and Ozzy Davis. I mean, my teachers and people who I sat up and, and dreamed about <laughs> be sitting next to one day. And I actually had the opportunity to have the nerve to sit next to them. You know, and share stages with him. You know, I did a reading in Harlem with Ozzy Davis, and he, you know, put, put a little thing in my arm because I was about to, like, I was freaking out that I was sitting next to Ozzy Davis. And I did my reading and sat back down, and he nudged me in my arm with his, I mean, my shy with his elbow and said, you done good. And that changed my whole life. That moment right there, I don't care if I don't ever become the poet laureate of some city or whatever, right? Because the poet laureates of sitting, most of them, I can write better than them. I'm going to say it. it. I can. But because I speak from a very black experience unapologetically, I'm not going to get those awards. They're not going to give them to Sonia Sanchez. You know, they, she had to, she fighting for tenure. And she fight, yeah. So if, you, if you're on the right side of things, it's not going to be the easy way. So the artists like us are the ones that you have to support extra. The sister last night, I was like made a little sideways comment about the books and she said, let me get two. She wrote me a check for two books. She didn't need two books. She said, I'll find somebody to give it to. If we're not doing that, I buy everybody books. I buy the books of writers that don't like me. I don't care. I'm buying eight books. They are contributing to the culture. I might not even like their poems so much, but I'm building a library for my son that's going to be out of the world, out of this world. And so we have to yeah, and so that's what, and so it's just honest. It's just great to see an activist on the ground that's really speaking from his heart. My work is from my heart. I don't write um, to get awarded or to get white people to be comfortable, you know, it's so I can get published in some major journal or whatever. Um, it's because I know that my words and my work is supposed to move something. And if I'm not moving people, if I'm not getting you to think or inspired to, to write your own work or you organize in your own community, then I'm not doing my work as an artist. Um, I want to, and I want to read, if that's okay, I can read, a, okay, I'm going to read a poem. So I wonder, I wonder, I wonder, because I love my son is like, you know, really, 
amazing. When I lost Amiri Baraka, it's funny because I hear people saying this all the time. My son is eight. And, he, you know, people, the kids teach you everything. You have to listen to your children. You children, no matter, you know, how they dress, you have to understand that. You know what I mean? You have to not judge them so hard. It's okay? Okay. So this is... Um, and so my son, you know, I, when I, was, I got pregnant in ATL, you know, I had my baby in Northside Hospital, so, you know, I got, I mean, <laughs> ATL is, you know, is a part of my history, had my baby here. And, um, and so I was pregnant, and I was at the post office, right in the West End, off Abernathy, and I fell down, because I was tired, I was, because I was working, take, sending, going, you know, sending books to the, off to the, whatever, whoever I was sending books to. And um, I thought about being tired, and about how, as a woman, I don't really take a break from work. Um, because when you run your own company, when you run an institution, you work all the time. There is no nine to five, you get off and have dinner and go to bed and all that. It's just, I'm working through the night. I wait for my son to go to sleep and then I start working again from about 10 until about three in the morning. And so I'm on probably little sleep most of the time, but whatever. So I wrote this poem called Petition for a National Holiday to Honor the Achievements of American Women or Who in the Hell Else Deserves a Day Off More Than Us? And I wrote that because I said, Jessica, you, at some point you have to slow down so you can be here for the movement, right? So we have to take care of ourselves. But this country doesn't recognize one woman in American history, let alone a black woman, who's done anything relevant in this country. We don't have one Monday that celebrates a woman yet. So I don't know if Michelle gonna make it happen. Her day time is running out. But maybe in post, um, the post Obamas can maybe help us make some things happen in this country. I don't think that thing's gonna happen until they're out of office, to be honest. And um, so this is petition, and I'm, I'm writing this, and this is, um, I wrote this, and this, I wrote it because uh, of what happened to me at ATL, so I wanted to share it with you. This poem is a petition. Please sign and move along. Columbus got one, and Macy's has a white sail. Washington and all the U.S. presidents, but not his African mistress, not his black daughters. There is that one day to give thanks for the genocide of Native Americans and eat turkey. Even Jesus can't have his own day. He has to share with some imaginary fat man in the red suit who only visits the rich annually. Finally, and with much resistance, let us have a day for Martin, but even Martin Luther King has some help. If anybody deserves a day off, it's a black woman. I'm not talking about a day that has shout us out a token day of recognition like Secretary's Day, something cute to add to the calendar. When I wake up on this morning, on this day, I want some stuff to shut down. I don't want the mail to run. I want all the railroads to have a moment of silence and honor of Harriet Tubman. I want the Joint of Truth name to be written in Swahili summer clouds. I want the original Statue of Liberty returned back to her original African self. I want stone monuments for every rape, every daughter separated and sold for every child cut from her mother's womb for every scar the ones we can see and the ones we push down inside our stomachs braid into our hair or spit down the toilet i want a war memorial built off the potomac river to represent the bloodshed of the african holocaust for women who jumped off sides of ships smothered their babies to save them from a life of inhumanity i want cynthia mckinney parkway in georgia to be more than a green and white sign I don't make this trip a highway a better circle than 285. This one was for Zora, Coretta, Angela, Mary, Mama Stone, Kathleen, Rosa, Vivian, Irene, Virginia, Mama Love, Lady, and every child born girl today. I want Sophia, the black goddess writer who really wrote The Matrix, to be given more than money. I want to get all those same access keys to all those studio doors that Wachowski was ran through with ease with her story in their teeth and her womb in their pocket. A black woman's life is a cheat sheet for humanity. I want Octavia Butler to get a residual check on this day for every sci-fi movie ever made in the new millennium. I want my female classmates shot in the streets of Detroit and Chicago, Atlanta, Brooklyn to be memorialized and talked about like the Columbine students. For every black woman raising children alone, any woman for that matter, stepmoms, earth moms, midwives, housewives, any woman who gave up her nine to five and the ones who never stop till they die or retire. I want the airlines to give them vouchers so every black woman can touch the ocean on this day, can see a part of the world, something they dreamt of, how create but can't afford to enjoy. For every tongue we had to bite, for every heartbreak, for the dozen of times we've become ugly, stupid, worthless, for every job broke, every wrist cut, every pill swallow, every collect call we say yes to, every bullet we swallowed in the name of love on this day, this country will reflect on the sacrifices of Africa's daughters who by force have birthed your son. 
guns. This is just the beginning of my demands. This poem is a petition for a national holiday to acknowledge African American women for the systematic use of our backs. Tell me, will you sign up? Thank you. I love you. Art can make change. Keep supporting artists that care about your community. Peace. Let's give it up. Jessica Care Moore, straight from Detroit. And on now, we get ready to go do this work. Everybody ready? Yeah. Now, let me, are you ready? Yeah. Let's thank our good brother, Reverend Derek Rice, and where's Minister Juan Smith? Sankofa, they still working. So we get ready to give y'all some, some quick instructions so that we can go to the workshops. We want to recognize some folks real quick that are here. They're moving because y'all know this is like election, like, vibe going on right now. It's November 4th and there's a lot of stuff going on. But we, in addition to recognizing um, Atlanta, Atlanta City Council one Keisha Lance Bottoms, we already recognized. We want to recognize again State Senator Vincent Fort. State Representative D. Dawkins. And we have one more. Where's Mayor Jackson? Mayor Jackson from Lithonia is here as well. So we just want to recognize. So I don't think any of them, I don't know. Yeah, Senator Ford is on the ballot. So y'all just make sure y'all vote. So they're here, right? Look at them again. Would y'all stand up one more time? Matter of fact, just come and stand right here and, while, and we give instructions from here. D. Dawkins Hagler. D. Dawkins Hagler. I mispronounced her name and she just looked at me like, boy. I just want y'all to look at them, all right? They came here to be with the people. So when they need us, we need to rock with them. Everybody clear, right? Because Brad Tory made it real clear. There's some weak politicians that are selling us out. They're here, so remember their names and rock with them. Everybody good? All right. Here's what we're doing. We're going into our workshops right now. Um, this is the work. So we have our volunteers that are ready. So if you have registered for peer-to-peer -peer real talk, if you've registered for peer-to-peer -peer real talk and you have registered for knowing and asserting our legal rights when encountering police, I want you to just step out to this aisle right here. Step out to this aisle. You're going to remain in this room, but we just want you to step out to this aisle because we're going to bring everybody forward. So if you are peer-to-peer -peer talk, and I want my peer-to-peer -peer talk presenters, this, this